just arrived in the post is this Atomic, which somebody sent me. Now, a friend of a friend of mine bought this 18 years ago, and he sent it to me to service it. So let's have a little look and see what kind of condition it's in. Well, the label is in good condition. This looks like an original bond trading Atomic. It's got the Made in Italy at the bottom. It's pretty dirty. Obviously, it's not cleaned very often. Um, wow. Okay, I noticed that this doesn't have a top seal in it, although there's a seal with this. This looks like the kind of seal that you get with the little hexagonal Belletti coffee machines. Um, this is not a complete seal set from Bond Trading either. I don't know if that's because half the seals are lost or because he's fitted some of them. I'm not sure, but these black seals here would be for the steam knob here. Um, so let's try putting on a top seal and seeing what happens if we try and make a coffee with this. The one thing I can see instantly is that um, this is never going to seal on the top, primarily because what he or she has been doing is bashing the coffee out by bashing the top of this and bashing the side of this. And if you do that, you will deform this basket and it will never form a seal on the top. So in a commercial coffee machine, what you have is you have a rubber bar so when you tap this you're tapping it on rubber not on the side of a bin so if you want to avoid ruining your machine don't do that because he's going to need a new coffee basket a set of these is about 25 australian dollars i noticed that the handle here is also split and that's often the happens when you have your gas turned up too high and the gas flames heat this handle up so you can still get these handles they're about 30 dollars and similarly with the jug you can see that that's broken there. And once again, that's probably because he's been having the gas flames licking up over the side of the machine and then burning that. That's about $25 there. And we'll see whether the machine leaks from here, but he'll probably need a seal set as well, which is about 25 Australian dollars. So let's put this machine back together and see what it's like. We will use a new coffee basket because I can see that that's never going to seal in a million years. I'm just going to put one of the silicon seals in here. Now the way these seals go in, you don't actually have to undo these screws to put the seal in. You screw the plate in first and then you just press this down and then to lock it in place, um, you just use the group handle. Now what I will do um, is clean out these channels with a Dremel tool. But first, I just want to see where the um, machine is, where the machine is leaking. Well, this will come out on camera, but I'm really struggling to get that seal to sit flat there. So I'm going to try making a coffee anyway and see how we get on. But it might just be that the inside of the channel needs cleaning out. So we're using a new basket in there, just tamping down the coffee. This is not quite freshly ground. This is, we went to a festival last weekend and took that with us, but it's pretty freshly ground. We'll see how we get on with that. This machine is different. I'm gonna put a lot more water in this machine than I'll put in our machine. I also noticed that this jug here is one of the jugs that was made during the period when you couldn't get proper atomic jugs because the spout on this jug is far shallower than the spout on a normal atomic jug, and that might not seem significant when it comes to pouring coffee or water into the machine, because I'll show you on our day-to-day -day machine, if you look at the spout there versus the spout there, you see there's a lot bigger curvature on that machine, which makes it much easier to pour. What you notice about this machine is that this is screwed in much further than I'd expect. Now, as I say, every machine is different, but normally you'd expect the, um, there to be a few millimeters protrusion from there. On this cooker, we do have bigger gas rings here, and it is a fact that the hotter the heat source, the better pressure you'll get in this machine, but these size gas rings here are fine because the flames don't lick up the side of the machine and melt the handles here and here. So we're starting to get coffee coming out and I can't see any obvious leaks either here at the steam knob or here, which is a good thing. I suspect that the main problem that the owner of this machine was having was just leaks at the top. And the reason for that was because he's been bashing the basket and no longer has a flat seal. But in actual fact, that looks absolutely fine. 
Of course, what we've yet to see is what the pressure is like. So we'll wait for the sound of the machine to change and then we'll get an idea of what kind of pressure this machine is operating at. These bond trading atomics tend to be fairly standard and fairly good, but what happens over time if you live in a hard water area, you start to get a buildup of lime scale on the bottom of the machine and you get ever less um, water in there and ever le less pressure. But as I say, we've given this a little wash out and shake and it's not as if lots of deposits came out, so maybe we'll be lucky with this machine. So the machine is just starting to change the sound. You can just hear that. So I'm going to just release a bit of the wet steam. Okay, you can see that one of these steam nozzles is slightly blocked there. And also that steam pressure is not particularly good on this machine. And what we're trying to achieve is what's called the whisper. So you've just got the tip in the milk. And ideally what you'd do is you'd roll the milk. I'm no expert on it. And all those bubbles there, which you get when you first put the nozzle in the milk, should be sucked into that little vortex and burst, leaving you with a beautiful, silky smooth milk with no bubbles. If you were to suddenly move the jug down, you would get a whole load of bubbles injected into there, and that's not what you want. So slightly struggling with this machine to get enough pressure to really expand this milk where I want to. But that just could be because the nozzles are blocked. That end tip obviously screws off, and we'll just give this machine a thorough clean out. Yeah. I'm not really getting any expansion of the milk here. This should be expanded almost to the top now, but it's not. And there's nothing wrong with the milk because we used it this morning on our machine. So this machine, although it doesn't have any obvious steam leaks, definitely has some pressure issues. If you tap the milk like that, any large bubbles will burst. start pouring the coffee out it's good practice to actually give the nozzle a wipe down with the green side of the sponge keep it nice and clean stop those holes blocking up and when you've finished steaming the milk always open this and the, actually the steam coming out will hopefully clear any blockages and heat the mugs with either a boiling water tap or hot water there's no creme up on there to say that could be because the coffee is a few days old. Plenty of coffee coming out of there. Ideally, you want to tilt the mug as well when you're. I'm no expert in making coffees. My darling wife is a trained barista and a million times better than me. We'll see what we come out with. There'll be no awards for this coffee. Yeah, that milk's just not that great. That pretty much sums up that first coffee from this machine. So when you've made coffee, always put a bit of water in there so that you don't allow that to dry because it's much, much easier to clean the machine out if there's water in there rather than trying to clean that dried coffee off the bottom of the jug. Coffee taster, Grace, how does that taste? <coughs> that is like the worst coffee I've ever tasted. Does it taste metallic? Yeah, even by my yeah. standards it, of coffee. Yeah, it smells And I pretty... don't even like coffee. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a great coffee. You can taste the machine. So that machine needs to be thoroughly cleaned out and we'll need to take the nozzle off here, unblock it, uh, clean, we we'll have to take that top seal out, clean it out with a Dremel tool and then um, start again. Maybe take this off and see why that's screwing in there so much. Although I have to say it's not leaking, which is good. The best place for that coffee is down the sink. when you've made a coffee to do two things one is to have a look at the grind and see how evenly the water is coming through there that might tell you if your top grill is blocked this one isn't blocked and the other thing is to give the machine a thorough good shake out and empty the water in the machine into the jug shake the machine thoroughly from side to side it's difficult to do with one hand Empty that machine out into the jug and the amount of 
deposits that come out, which is practically zero on this machine, will tell you how dirty the machine is. Just because no deposits come out doesn't mean the machine isn't dirty. It might be that there's just a huge layer on there. You'd have to put lemon juice or something like that inside there. But this machine is probably pretty clean. Maybe the only thing that's wrong with it is that this end nozzle is black. If you hold that up to the light, you can see that the light's only shining through one nozzle, which is why the steam pressure is only half of what it should and be. When you come to clean one of these nozzles, you really need to take this off the machine because otherwise all that happens is you end up sticking a needle or something up there to unblock the hole and then the next time you have the pressure of the milk coming down, whatever it is that's blocking will just simply block those holes oh, again. This nozzle is really ingrained. That's the side that I've cleaned and that's the side that I have yet to clean. This is just all the gunk that's come out the front but to get the gunk out of the middle of there, we're just going to use this little Dremel tool here on a slow speed. And what that's going to do is clean the inside of that because that gunk that's in there is pretty well ingrained. You can see all of the stuff that's been pushed out. And every time you steam milk, that is just going to be pushed into those holes and we block them up. See, both of those holes are blocked up again. You can see all of this stuff that's come from the inside of here that you'd never be able to get out unless you actually took this off. You can also see if we now film down there, you can clearly see light passing through both of those holes. So we can put that back on the machine. That should be good to go. You can see that despite having made a coffee, this seal is still not sitting flat. So we're just going to whiz out these screws here in a little bit chewed up you can still get these screws we keep them here but if you do get them make sure you get stainless steel or brass ones what normally happens is they end up snapping off in there which is not a tragedy it doesn't affect the coffee in any way it just means you can't get them out Once you've got those screws out this should just lever out like so you can see i don't know how well you can see but this is all filthy in here all of this gunk here, I don't know what that is, it almost looks like grease or something like that. Maybe it's just old coffee grinds, but whatever it is, it is not good. So we're going to get a bristle brush on there to clean all of that out. And once again, using the Dremel tool. Just empty that out and see what actually comes out. I wonder what that seal is exhibiting. Flush. This is never going to make a good seal with all that gunk on there, so you need to get that under warm water just with a scouring pad and clean all of that off. We've cleaned out all those channels. What I'm expecting to happen is that this will just sit flush in there like so, which it does. Here you go. Let's and it's supposed to sit flat all the way around. Use this screw out and make sure that all the seals and everything are actually in place here. Because as I say, this handle seems to screw in a lot further than I think it should. Once you've undone that screw, this should just pull straight off. But this machine is so dirty. One way of stopping it getting like, like this is to take it off the cooker when you're frying stuff with oil because that oil all splashes onto the machine and then you heat the machine up and it ends up burning on there. But just have a look at the state of these inside of this machine. It's terrible. Once you've taken that fitting there off, you just should be able to screw this all the way out like so. And there should be three washers on here, which there are and one brass washer at the end there, which there is as well. How well you'll be able to see that, but that washer there is just starting to disintegrate on the inside. So we'll just swap these washers out with a new seal kit. Just to finish this service off, we've replaced the jug handle with a new one. Those are still available from Bond Trading, about $30. Um, and the last thing we're gonna do is take off this group handle and put a new one on. Now it's almost certain that that is going to shatter off and we're going to have to drill that out, but um, let's give it a go. They should just screw in and out relatively easily, but there are two thread sizes. I'm intrigued to know what this one is. Well, this is not coming out easily. What we're going to have to do is get the rest of the Bakelite off and then see if we can get some more grips or something around there, but that will be seized in there solid. 
If you're going to be attempting this yourself, you do have to be a little bit careful because these handles here you can get. In fact, you can actually get the whole group handle still from Bond Trading, but they're quite expensive. So we need to try and get that out without damaging the threads or without cracking this um, alloy here. We just use a little watchmaker screwdriver to tap out the remainder of the Bakelite down there. And you can just see the beginning of the threads there. Now, it's probably worth letting this soak with a bit of WD-40 or some kind of thread penetrant in there. But if it's as seized as this is, I imagine the it's not going to be able to penetrate. So what we may just do is get an induction torch around here and heat this up because heat is what you need to separate two bits of metal that are fused together like that. I'm going to do first is just use an angle grinder to cut this here then we're going to use our magnetic induction torch to get that coil over the metal stem that's left heat that heat that to red hot and then get the mole grips on there and hopefully be able to screw it out it just takes a few seconds for the induction torch to heat that metal up and we've tried heating that up to red hot a couple of times and getting it out, but it's not budging. So what we may try doing is using a bigger coil and actually heating the outside of this up and seeing if we can get that to expand and get that out that way. We used the induction torch to heat this up a few more times. And what happened is the shaft actually ended up shearing off there, which is no bad thing. What we're gonna do now is try and drill that out. If you do ever have to drill out bolts, the advice I'd give you is A, use brand new sharp drill bits and B, use a center punch or something to make sure that the hole is in the center of the bolt. This is a spring loaded one. And when you push this down like so, it leaves a tiny little indentation there for your first drill. When you're drilling this out, you do not want to drill any further than the screw threads, and you definitely don't want to drill all the way into here. Otherwise you'll make a hole in it, and that wouldn't be good. So just either mark the drill bits or make a mental note not to drill further than that. Drill our first two and a half mil hole. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna use a set of left hand drill bits. And sometimes by using left hand drill bits, you will, when you get close to the edges, actually be able to wind the thing out. The heat of the drill bit is enough to break the rust. Um, I haven't had much success with these, but we might as well give it a try. Here is, you set your drill to reverse, and that might this up to the next drill size which is 4.8 but we have to be a bit careful because we're very close to the edges there. Wow this really is proving a battle the 4.8 mil bit. We haven't touched the outside threads yet but there's still no sign of this giving up yet. In the event we sent this off to a local machine shop but they weren't able to get that broken bit of bolt out either but what they did do was lay a helicoil in there which means that we can now thread the handle in. Well, that's not 100% perfect, but you win some and you lose some, and that looks a million times better than it did before with that cracked handle. This is ready to send back to the owner. We've replaced the steam knob, the jug handle, the group handle, put a new basket in there, clean the machine, put new seals in, and that will be almost as good as new.